Well, DJI's had active track on their drones for years. How does it stack up on their gimbal? Let's find out. Okay, so when DJI first announced the Ronin RS2, I was really excited about it. It did check off a lot of boxes that I was looking for for my next generation gimbal, but one of the things that really caught my attention was the implementation of ActiveTrack into the body of the gimbal. Now I've been using DJI drones for a couple years and ActiveTrack has been a part of the DJI drones that I've had for a couple years. So I was really interested to see how it was implemented and how well it worked or didn't work on this gimbal. So what I wanna do today is go outside, put this together. I wanna show you how to activate and get active track working if you have an RS2 and also show you situations where you're probably gonna use it and ways to implement it that I think could help your production. So let's go ahead, let's step outside and take a look at it. Okay, so we are out here now with the Ronin S2. We're gonna go over the different ways to take the Raven eyes, set it up and show you the two ways you can get your active track on the DJI Ronin S2. I do have two people helping me out today. I have my great sturdy assistant, Bob. He's gonna help me with the original track. And I do have a good buddy of mine, James Preston, an incredible documentarian behind the camera. I'll leave an Instagram up here in case you're looking for any documentarians. And he's actually a pretty wicked gimbal operator himself, so I'm glad he's here today. So let's go ahead now and take care at the RS2 so you can kind of see. Now, the first thing you just wanna take a look here, I'm just gonna point at these cables real quick, is you know make sure you have your HDMI coming into the Raven on. I have my USB coming up here into the top port here on my Ronin. And then the other thing is I have this last cable here coming out from my Raven Eye into the bottom port of my RS2. So once we're on here, basically, I'm gonna turn this around. You're gonna cut this on. It's gonna start making a signal. Now, the first time you ever actually do this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, if you look right here, the serial number for the Raven Eyes is right here. Set that up, log in. I'm not gonna go into detail thing on how to set a Raven Eyes because this is really about active track. You should already have it at that point. Once you do, we're gonna come in. I'm gonna make sure that my Raven Eyes is set up as my Wi-Fi, which it is right there. All right, and then once I have that set up as my Wi-Fi, I'm gonna come into DJI and then when the DJI app up, it's gonna show me my screen right away. So it's pretty, really fast to go, really, really good. So let's go ahead now and talk about the two ways to set this up. The first is the screen back here. Now, if you look at the screen, what we have here, that's our standard screen. If you swipe down, that'll get you to the active track on the back of the touch screen right here. Now, I can set my speed, pretty standard. I'm just gonna keep it on 20, that's a good general speed. And you can see the picture. Now, if you look here at the picture on the back of my screen, it happens to be the exact same thing that happens to be up there on my camera and on my phone. So, the first thing I can do, I can use this and I can actually take my thumb, draw a green square around Bob, and Bob is there. Now he is tracked. Now, I kind of think these are a little bit small, unless I have really small hands, and even I have kind of troubles doing this out. The other thing you can do, if you center frame your target, you can click the trigger once. And look at that, boom. Whatever's in the center of the screen will become object that's selected to track. And I can then take my joystick here and I can actually, if you wanna off frame it or off center it for some reason, you can do that and it'll track it off centered. I'm gonna recenter my track here. One click, I'm back on Bob. I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna show you now. We got Bob here. All right, I got Bob on the camera. I'm gonna go. Now Bob is tracked. And now I can stay with Bob and Bob stays perfectly tracked. Pretty simple, not a lot to it. We can keep him. Bob is good to go. So that is active track number one. Now, that works. And actually there's gonna be times maybe your phone dies, maybe something else that happens. It is good to know, I think that you have this active track option right there inside the body of the gimbal. I think it's super helpful, but I think if you really wanna use this and make your life a lot better, you're gonna to wanna to use your phone and you're gonna to wanna to use the app. So let's go in here now and look at how it works in the app. So I'm back here in the app. I'll just take this off here so it's not on there anymore, okay? And you can see here, I've got Bob on my phone. I can just take my finger, if I just draw around Bob, boom. Now Bob, 
is active track. Now it's so much easier to do it right here because I've got a bigger screen. I can touch it so much easier and just roll. And the same thing again, if I pick Bob up, right? I still have the same screen. I can use my screen as a monitor and I'll actually just do a 360 commercial right here. And there you go. As you notice, I'm walking in 360 around Bob and Bob stays pretty much exactly where I want them. So you can really see there how the active track, it's actually really, really simple to set up. Once you get the Raven eyes goes, it just lets you go. And that's what I consider one of the beauties about this system. It's not complicated. When you're in the field, you don't wanna be in a situation where you have to be fiddling and diddling this stuff. You can literally set this up in a few seconds, a couple finger touches, and you're good to go. So definitely, definitely a great part of the active track system. Okay, so now that we've shown you how to set up the active track here on the DJI Ronin S2, what I wanna do is setting up's all good and done, but what I wanna show you is actually how this is a practical, useful tool for you as a filmmaker with the gimbal and how it can help you unlock some of the things you can do. So let's go ahead, take a look at some samples of how you can use this in your own shooting. Okay, so here is another example that I think would make sense for you. And this is, let's say you're on a set. Uh, I'm in a kitchen. My wife will probably be upset because it's a little messy, but she loves me, she'll forgive me. Um, but this is a sample of, I'm gonna let James walk around with the camera and just let you see how you can follow someone in a work setting and you don't have to worry about the camera tracking. So I got some dishes here. I'm gonna clean them and walk around the kitchen and I'll let James track me for a bit. All right, after track test number two. What I have here is I have some beautiful trash cans that are in desperate need of some media attention. So what I've done, I've drawn an active track, track box around them. I'm gonna sit in this chair, spin in a circle. Let's see if we can keep this sucker tracked. All right, ready? Let's get this done. And... Oh, yeah, baby. Can we go backwards? Oh, 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 oh. That is beautiful, huh? Trash cans, and I never lost it. And how many of you out there have ever been in a situation where you desperately need to get some trash cans, and you don't want to lose the sight of them? This is one of those things that I had to get them. Okay, so now this is the other area that I think active track is really, really important. is the fact that a lot of you out there are using gimbals for product, uh, videography, and and issues like and basically content creation. And what really makes this nice is that you can be dynamic in how you go and get your subject. So what I have here, I have a pink, uh, basically water face here. I wanna show you is I can basically have active tracked on there. And the good news is now I can do things where I can come back, I can just do a solid push in, maybe I rotate around. And you can see I get really, really dynamic shots and it just requires a minimal, minimal effort. and. Another thing that this could be really helpful for is I really like to have where I change elevation. So I could come up, I'll come up and you see, even though I come up with like a jib type shot here, I can come down, active track, jib down. And it just stays with it really, really nice. Even as I start to come under the table, look at that. It's still staying with it and I can rise back up and really, really keep that there in the center. And this is really, really important, guys, because this really unlocks a huge amount of potential here of the gimbal. And you can set your active speed and your tracking speed to get what you need, but this is so much easier on your body mechanically than the old days when you had to sit there and you're trying to either use a, I don't know, I always found that when I was using the joystick, the speed would always be a little off, I might miss it. This thing, I just go out there, do it. It just saves those repetitive times of having to get it. So I think for product, this thing is a godsend. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, and then really here is the last sample I'd like to do. This is a YouTube channel. Let's be honest. A lot of you out there 
are going to be using this for YouTube purposes. And what's good is that I can sit there and you can track someone like this just for YouTube stuff. I'm doing walk and talk stuff. There's really not much to it. Even if I walk backwards, I can really force James to walk backwards and it's going to track me. Okay, so there you go. And I will be honest, I was so happy when I got this system and set it up, just how easy it was to activate and utilize ActiveTrack. Because one of the things I was really worried about is I didn't want to have uh, something that took a lot of time to set up. And honestly, it just takes a couple seconds to set up. It's very, very easy. So huge kudos for DJI for making this such a simple and intuitive thing. And really, my kind of thoughts on it, I was able to use this on a commercial shoot uh, last week. and. It's nice, it's a handy, handy tool to have. You're not gonna use it for every shot you have. It's kind of like active track on a drone. I think you still need to fly your drone, but there are times you want it, and those times that you do need it, it is going to be a huge time saver. And honestly, just because the gimbal is so mechanically intensive on your body, it does, I think, help you mechanically take some of that stress off your body in certain shots. So it's a great tool, certainly one you're gonna wanna have in your tool bag if you're a gimbal operator. So I highly encourage, go out there, learn this, figure it out, and utilize it when you need to. So that's it for me. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Please leave me any comments if you have anything down below that you'd like to see on the RS2. Uh, if you like this, please subscribe. That does help me out uh, in the channel. I would appreciate it. Yeah, go out there guys, keep on shooting, and I'll talk to you soon.